My name is Jacques Fresco. I'm project director of the Venus Project in Venus, Florida. The Venus Project maintains if you don't want war, if you don't want poverty, hunger, unemployment, territorial disputes, and all the other problems that go with society, you have to declare the earth as the common heritage of all the world's people. If you fail to do that, you'll have problems to the amount of events you don't want to change. If we don't change, we'll have the same problems over and over again. The Venus Project is an attempt to design a world where poverty, war, prisons, police do not exist. Because we deal with the problems themselves, the factors that shape arrogant behavior, aggression, uh, all the things that paralyze our society and prevent it from growing. Politics was good a hundred years ago. Today, politicians have no ability to solve any problems because they're not students of behavior, they're not students of agriculture, oceanography, they know nothing about the factors that operate the world. So, they say things that people like to hear, and that gets them elected. Now, scientists, on the other hand, are not concerned with public approval. What they do, even if everybody on Earth believed the Earth was flat, they would say, you're wrong, this is the evidence we have to support the fact that the Earth is round. But they don't say, it's a little round, a little flat. That's politicians. Money uh, was a convenience designed by man many years ago. He used to carry a bag of apples, apples and change it for tomatoes. That was a trade in the old days. But when you invented money, it carried smaller particles. And it was easier to represent apples or tomatoes or eggs by giving a person a coin instead of bringing 50 eggs and chickens. Money represented a, a value agreed upon to diminish the lugging around of heavy objects. Later, it became the most corrupting medium in the world. It corrupted people. They paid each other off. If you wanted a congressman to act in your behalf, you put up a certain amount of money to help him get elected, and you owe that person a favor. And that's the same with the drug companies, the auto companies, the banks, all systems all over the world that use money are basically corrupt. Religion. In the old days, people could not account for natural events. They really know where all this came from, so they assume there was a guy that lived up in the sky that made all these things. He made the earth, I think he took uh, six days. On the seventh day, he rested. If it took six days, it means it was turning while he was making it, because you couldn't have a day. And that must be pretty rough to handle things while it's turning. And then he made a man and a woman and put them in a beautiful garden. Then he made a snake which walked upright and said, you know, do terrible things. And the, the people eat of the fruit of knowledge. And they ate the fruit and he kicked them out. First he made the snake to tempt them. I don't understand this all-loving, all-benevolent being that loves everybody. And then he creates the plague and other diseases when he gets angry. And then if you don't follow the teachings, all the religious teachings, you burn in hell. And that sounded to me like a psychopath, not God. But I'm mixed up when they tell me God loves everybody. Then he creates a plague where children die. And I say, how come the children are dying? Because the children shall suffer for the sins of the parents. This is not a just God. It's a man-made God. So when you ask me whether I believe in God, not the concepts of God, I've heard. 
War is a word which was invented when one territorial group of people took away other people's land. They used force and violence, and war was the media for doing that. You shot other people, stole their women and their resources for your own gain. And nations have been at war ever since man invented weapons. And as long as you invent weapons, uh, you can have war. And war is the means of protecting everything you've stolen from others. No nation starts out very big. They start out smaller and take land away from other people. And they don't take it by invitation. They weren't in, invited to take over the land. They took it by killing, force, and violence. And war is the most inappropriate way of solving the differences. That's why I'm against the Pentagon and the military, because they majorly should be concerned with how to bridge the difference and bring nations together toward a common purpose, namely taking care of the environment, one another, and restoring the damaged environment. That's what I'd like to see in military systems. I would like to see, instead of training millions of soldiers to be killing machines, I'd rather train them in being problem solvers, send them back to school, teach them social science, social psychology, sociology, so they can add to the culture, not be destructive. But ask anybody, what does democracy mean? They think it means participation in government affairs. So I asked them, do you really believe in democracy? They always say yes. I said, did you vote for the space program? They said, no. Did you vote for the Vietnam War? No. Did you vote for the war now? No. Where the hell do you participate? That's an illusion given to people. They even pick the people you vote for to make sure they'll keep things as they are, the establishment. So they put them out there for you to vote for them. If, the, if we lived in a democracy, there'd be 5,000 political parties, different points of view. In a true democracy, you would have that. All points of view expressed on television and radio. It's up to you to turn it off.